My next guest owns over 12 restaurants worldwide, including Red Rooster Harlem, Marcus Montreal, and much more. For more, let's bring in Marcus Samuelson, the acclaimed chef, restaurateur, and New York Times bestselling author. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. We don't need the beige book. We could have just asked you what's yes. going on with uh, food inflation and the consumer and all the rest of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been a tough ride after, you know, post, post COVID, a little bit changes in consumer customer's behavior, but we've been very fortunate with our restaurants. And actually, actually there's been opportunities and we, we grabbed some of those opportunity and we were able to grow as well. So I think, you know, it's, it, it's a tough market, but also, uh, I see a lot of potential for growth as well. You've got a lot of geographic diversity, uh, so that's what I want to ask you about. Marcus B&P, your Newark uh, yep. restaurant in Newark, New Jersey, is actually close to me. But, of course, you got famously Red Rooster Harlem. You yep. say you just opened up a location in Chelsea as well. What's the difference in this recovery between Newark and Manhattan, right? Newark was always sort of up and coming, maybe struggling. Manhattan's Manhattan. Yeah. How are they doing? Well, I mean, uh, it's just in a place... Post-COVID, a place like Newark feels a little bit different, right? Because people are still not coming back. You have three major, or three, four major uh, companies there, right? Between Rutgers, Audible, and Prudential. And, you know, when those offices are 30 40% filled, people are still working mostly at home. It, it impacts a community like Newark, downtown Newark, a lot. You know, Manhattan is always strong and resilient, you know, where, where there is. People are working... Maybe 40% from home, but still there's tourists or other people coming in, filling in in Manhattan and our, our Chelsea restaurant. We're doing extremely, extremely well. We're very fortunate. But, you know, it's also about helping others in our community in terms of food. You know, for me, being fortunate uh, with my restaurants, but also as a black chef, as a black person in the hospitality space, I see a lot uh, in terms of my colleagues and a lot of young chefs chefs and a lot of black young uh, minority owned businesses wants to start and it's very difficult to get ca access to capital mm -hmm. so for me it's always about how can i be an ally and how can i you know really come up with products that help that well that's fascinating real quick before we dive into that you mentioned that during the pandemic you were kind of opportunistic what does that mean and is there anything now as we see massive vacancies in office or maybe some changing patterns what do you think is the next kind of real area of opportunity in your space well, I don't know if we were opportunistic in the sense, but we were really thinking about what would growth look like. And landlords came to the table, uh, uh, property owners came to the table in a way that they hadn't done before. Right? So it changed, really, the demographic of how growth could look like. And if you have strong brands, you could grow post the pandemic in a way that pre-pandemic it was very difficult because property was just filled, and that changed during the pandemic. And still you can see now, actually, that there's a lot of open spaces, not just in Manhattan, but around all urban areas. Let's talk about access to capital and the role of reputation in that, yeah. because for decades now, you have had your brand, your reputation as a top-level chef. What, how did that help you to be able to open up a Chelsea location that's a, a tough commercial real estate market? How can you, how do you use your reputation, your resources to help some of those minority chefs who don't have the yeah, same I access? Mean, reputation works on many levels, right? Of course, your stuff, your restaurant's got to be great and people can enjoy it, but you also have to return to the investors, for example, right? So there's many levels, then you're going to have, have great bank statements when you go to a traditional lender like a bank or if you have private um, equity or what, you know, your bottom line got to make sense. What you do in the restaurants, a culture, people got to want to come and work for you, right? So it's, there's not just one way to look at reputation. You create a community where your bottom line's got to make sense, the culture of the place got to make sense, and most importantly, guests want to come back, right? Because guests, you guys truly decide, uh, you know, going out is a luxury, you don't have to do it, so we got to build experiences. And, you know, with, with our product here that we started together with Jay Norris, guest open doors initiative was really looking at, you know, how can we break down the barriers for minority-owned businesses? How can we create a platform where both the property owner and the entrepreneur, the smaller entrepreneur, that it's easier for them to work together by having flexible leases, right? Mm. Space, you know, when most food trends, you hear about them maybe online, you go to a pop-up, maybe you experience it through a food truck, right? But going from that, to a real restaurant, to a bigger space, it's a big, big step. Because just because you have a successful food truck does not mean you can sign a 10-year lease, 
right? And the, the property owner doesn't necessarily know specifically in the black and brown space about these incredible talents. Right? Mm. So no having access to the talent, knowing the property owners, what we really came up with here at Guest Open Doors Initiative is really a platform where both parties can come to the table and landlords can have flexible leasing structure three months, four months, six months, and that's how a small brand can really become, and like, you know, the journey on becoming an iconic brand, a la Shake Shack, because mm -hmm. it can come into an A space versus a B or C space. Or I think space. about Halal Guys, you know, yes. started a food truck on 6th Avenue and now it's everywhere.